Welcome to uh, our Nelson Unitarian Spiritual Center. Voting systems. So Anne and Cheng are going to be talking about that. And uh, as, as always, we'll have a time for announcements just before the end of today's service. And now I'd in like to invite Roy to come up and light our candle. I think Kelly had taken my face. Oh, you mean in Oh, I thought you were going to light the chalice and she was going to do the candles of concern. If you want, Roy, I'll do it all if you like. That's all. <clears throat> Good morning. You have, you have the paper or you don't have the paper anymore? That's okay. I, I, I'm going to do it extemporaneously. Is that a nice big word? To be all extemporaneously. <laughs> Good word. Okay. Uh, long words. <laughs> it is custom all over the world in Unitarian churches to light so up. Oh, look at this. I have, I have a, a little... Angel, angel, angel fairy buddy who's going to light the candle. Bless your heart. While you speak. <laughs> you think I'm going to say more? Um, I am. Uh, anyway, we. this is a, a tradition that we honor all over the world, the Unitarians. And with the light that's inside of us, we reach out to all of you and we light this candle as a representative of I'm watching. There you go. Look Yay. at that. Yeah. Ye yeah. of little faith. <laughs> what does it remind you of? Put your mind to it. Put your mind to it. I think it was just a little bit of patience. Okay. And uh, all right. Well, all right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we were going to sing. So we're going to sing. So we're going to have it. We're going to sing a song, and then we'll do more candles later. The the song. The song we're we're going to sing is in our in our little books, our little hymnal books. And Jacqueline's going to lead us this morning. She's here with the piano. She's great. Yeah, we're going to what an old favorite. One of three songs we know. <laughs> Spirit of Life, number one, two, three. You can find the song Spirit of Life in the book. <laughs> and I invite you to stand when we sing as you're willing to say it.
for Karen, who is usually here, but um, she's not feeling well today, so she didn't come. So I'm lighting a candle that she will feel better soon and soon be able to join us again. <laughs> This is in honor of my brother-in-law and his family. Hi, my name is Jacqueline. Um, this candle is for Philip Hewitt. Um, who is a uh, minister emeritus from um, the Vancouver Unitarian um, congregation, and um, he had a massive stroke last Wednesday, right? So Deborah let us know that he, um, anyways, I, we're not quite sure what's going on with him, but he is a um, treasure. Treasure. That's right. I met him many years ago in Edmonton when he came to speak there. I have seen him hold court up at Wilderness at Fry Creek, and um, he's a special person. So. He, he was one of the founders of the Fry Creek land. There were four Unitarian ministers who founded that place. Yeah, I'll just say, I'm gonna, you have to pay attention. Hi, I'm Maureen. Um I went to the play, and I can't pronounce it. Shra I'm looking at Katie. Ho. Shwame. Which was so profoundly thought-provoking, inspiring, um, challenging, and with hundreds of people who showed up for it, it it's still resonating. So lighting a candle for real reconciliation and all that that means for all of us. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Can I light a candle for that? <laughs> I'm Dale. I'm Dale. This is a bit of a commercial and it also is a moment of remembering this month is Black History Month. Correct? And it's fading. And by March the 4th, the next service will be finished, except that we're going to do a tribute to that's a Theodore Parker story that will tie in our Black History Month appreciations here. So that's great. Just to My name's Keith, and I'm lighting a candle concern for uh, uh, one of our sons, Neil, who is our most stable and secure child, <laughs> who's having a, have a bad time right now. So, but I'm sure he'll persevere. But I'm just thinking of him sometimes. Is there anyone else? Yeah, I'm going to talk. <laughs> I'm going to light the last candle. And this is for all those joys and concerns that we hold in our hearts. And for those that might not be speech right yet. 
May the light of these oh, oh. together. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. <laughs> we get to say this together. All, all, all of you who have a, uh, it's an affirm, it's called the affirmation. <coughs> And uh, may the light of these, these candles inspire us, us to use our powers to heal and not to harm, harm to, to help and not, and not to hinder, hinder, to serve the spirit of truth in loving affection, trust, and hope. Um, usually at this time, we have um, a, a quiet reflection to get us all into a very calm space, and Jacqueline is going to lead us today in our meditation. I just didn't want to wrestle the mic. So, all right, everyone. Um, so, we'll just take the next few minutes to just have a quiet time. Um, life is made up of many patterns, and this particular imagery is about one of those patterns. So, Begin by listening to the rhythm of your breathing. And I wonder if you might take three deep breaths. And sometimes it's helpful on your in-breath say, I am. And on your out-breath say, relax. So just go ahead and gently breathe in and breathe out. And some people find it helpful to close their eyes and just find that your body begins to slow down and you might feel a greater sense of relaxation. And again, we breathe in and we breathe out. And I wonder if you might imagine that you're in a forest in the winter and there's snow all around. And today we notice that one tree has an icicle. And it's been frozen there throughout the winter. But as we breathe in, and we breathe out. And as the warmth of our breath begins to continue to flow through our body, we notice that perhaps the icicle is doing what icicles do, it starts to melt. And I wonder if you might imagine that the icicle begins to transform from the winter where it stayed there, pristine and beautiful. And it slowly begins to melt as you breathe in. You breathe out. And it's all right to imagine a slow flow. Perhaps it speeds up, and that is the nature of spring. It ebbs and flows. It warms and it cools. And 
just noticing that it's all right to have an ebb and a flow of the breath. <clears throat> And we'll just spend the next few moments reflecting on the wonder that we have in nature and in the world around us where things can transform. take one more deep cleansing breath and come back to the room. That's right. Everybody's back. We'll go on. Um, Shing and Ann have come to speak to us today about proportional representation. And as I said, we're having a, a referendum in the fall, so I'm, I'm, this is a very topical and timely presentation if you haven't been engaged with this. Um, I just want to editorialize just, just off the top. I really believe that we can make a better world that has more justice and more care for other people. I believe that. And we, the way we live our lives makes a difference. And, and we all try in our lives to do what we can to make a better world. But sometimes it's not going to be just enough to do what we can in our lives. Sometimes we need to do things together to change the way the world works together. And that becomes democracy. That becomes choosing together the world that we want in the future. And that's politics. And many, many Canadian people are very tired and frustrated by politics. And you can't really blame them because it's not working for, for us very well. So there's one little light at the end of the tunnel to make it a bit better. There's a couple things. The NDP has done one thing, was getting money out of politics, getting big money out of the political funding. That's been a good step. But the way we vote is, is another thing. And Anne and Shing have been working very hard talking. They were talking in Cranbrook. And actually, it's you've been working for years on it now, haven't you? Mm -hmm. to, to, say that if we, do, if we change the way we vote just a little bit, we'll get more democracy in, in our province. And I think it's a really important step. It's not going to cure everything, but it will really help us move on the road. So I'm, I, I'd like to invite Anne and Shing to give us a presentation about proportional representation. <coughs> Welcome, you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Where's your bio? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming out and letting us talk about politics on a Sunday morning. Um, I'll introduce Sheng. Sheng, originally from Holland, is a lifelong political junkie. He has worked every available jo election job in BC, from organizing the provincial and the federal elections as the deputy returning officer, to taking votes at the voting booth, to sweeping the floors after the election. And he ran as a Green Party candidate in Nelson Creston in the 2013 provincial election, but currently has no 
uh, strong political party affiliation. Sheng believes that the 2018 BC referendum is a key opportunity to reduce the influence of political elites and special interests, and to return political power back to where it belongs with us, the voters. This lovely woman next to me is called Anne Remnant. She is currently the Fair Vote Canada Kootenai leader. And although politically non-political by nature, fairness has always been important to Anne. It was the disparity between the popular vote and the election outcome that first alerted her to a systemic problem that first passed the post. And to proportional representation as a no-brainer. That was a dozen years ago. Since then, she has done whatever she can to bring proportional representation in the public eye. She's been waiting impatiently for the next best opportunity, and that opportunity is now. Next one. We figured this all out at home. <laughs> okay, so um, who are we? Uh, oh, first of all, I just wanted to say, we want to make room for your questions, so we'll just try to boom through this as, as quickly as we can, or reasonably quickly as we can, so that then there'll be room for questions at the end. Um, so who are we? This is basically who we are. Anyone who stood out there fighting for something they really believe in, Fair Vote Canada, Fair Vote in BC, both nonpartisan or multi-partisan, depending on which you prefer. Um, grassroots, 99.9% uh, .9 volunteers trying to make the world a better place. During this little shortened presentation, because usually it's an hour and a half long uh, with discussion, now it's half an hour. So. We'll be talking about first past the post, our current electoral system, and the problems, why we need to change it, about proportional representation, why it works and how it works better, how you can get involved, and then we'll get to Q&A. So, first, democracy. What is democracy? It's uh, derived from uh, two Greek words, demos, the people, grato, to rule. No. Democracy, the people rule. So, not political parties rule, not political elites, not corporations, us, the people, that's what it's about. How did we get here? Well, in 1921, that man on the left, Mackenzie King, promised 1921 will be the last election held under first past the post. That might sound familiar because it's what the man next to him said in 2015. We're still waiting. This nice voter here is still waiting. And why are we having a referendum again? We've had it twice, and some people will tell you it failed both times. It didn't actually meet the 60% bar both times. Um, every opinion poll has shown that a majority of people in BC and Canada want more proportionality in their system. 65% um, 60, 60 to 70%. The BC election, the last BC election, 57% of us voted for a party which promised proportional, a referendum on proportional or proportional representation. So that's why we're here. Uh, this is the system that we have. We use it at provincial level and federal level all over Canada. Um, it's we get elect one person in each riding. Uh, it's fairly easy, but there are some problems with it. And here we have the heart of the problem. Three people want to go for a beer in the Red Lion. Two people want to go for a beer at the castle. Two people want to go for a beer at the Queen's Head. Four people want to go for coffee in a coffee shop, the coffee wins. Nobody gets beer. And that's important. So, that 
plays out at the local level. This uh, is this graph show the uh, electoral election outcome from 2017 here in Nelson Kirsten. Shows the Liberals got 28 percent, Independents got two percent of the vote, Greens got 28 percent of the vote. But here on the right, you can see all those people might as well have stayed home. Their vote actually counted for nothing. Only people who voted NDP got got their vote to mean something. And that plays itself out 87 times in the province. Uh, that's why in, uh, 19, in 2017, last year, over 300,000 liberal voters didn't get representation. Over 300,000 NDP voters didn't get representation, and also over 300,000 green voters. Altogether, almost half our votes went nowhere. And that's why we get false majority governments. What do we mean with false majority governments? It means a government, a party gets less than half of our, of our votes, yet they get more than half of the seats in Parliament, and they are they're in that way uh, 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 allowed to form majority government, so-called majority, but it's a minority. So does it happen often? Well, of the 17 governments we've had since 1956, 15 have been false majorities. Only twice have we not had a false majority. That's the current government, which is a minority government, and back in 2001, when the Liberals got 57% of the vote, which translated that time into 97% of the seats, every, all but two seats. Anyone done this? Strategic voting? It's, it's really the only tool we have to try to um, shape the outcome of the election. The trouble with it is that we're not voting for what we want. And as Shane just said, then we don't get the government that we, that we want. Um, in 2015, after the federal election, the Broadbent Institute um, asked people um, if they had voted for their number one choice, and almost half had not. That's almost half of us are voting for something we don't want, the lesser of two evils. Another problem with first past the post is that um, we get policy lurch. So one, one government comes in with what they want, the next one comes in and they change everything on the board. Actually, it's a cute little uh, thing, I'll read it. Oh, I can't even see that. Look, he's spending all the money like he promised. And she says, yeah, but it's from your wallet. <laughs> um, here we have a fire scientist, rehire scientist. Eliminate the long form census, remember that. Reinstate long form census. Start community mailboxes, eliminate community mailboxes. So we're not really moving forward as a society, we're just swinging back and forth. Having that single party majority also leads to hyper partisanship and polarized politics. Similar to over here where she says, if you were my husband, I'd poison your coffee. And he says, if you were my wife, I would drink it. <laughs> I, wait, I... I came here from Holland back in 1982, and I have to say I was absolutely shocked when I saw uh, what happened in our parliaments. Uh, people not talking with each other about subjects, they're just pointing fingers at each other. They're not asking serious que questions, they're looking for gotcha moments from the ministers. Ministers weren't answering questions, they were just reading off a little sheet that somebody had give them, given them with talking points. Where I came from, politicians in Parliament actually discussed the issue of the day and how we could move forward with it. Didn't see that here. I was uh, reading on Facebook, which <laughs> I do a lot, um, and I stumbled upon this lovely quote from Kennedy Stewart, who is a Burnaby MP, and he's championing the pipeline issue in Burnaby, yes. in his area. Championing the anti pipeline. Uh, yes, thank you. Anti, yes, yes, anti pipeline. He said, We all, he's talking about the divisiveness in Parliament. He said, We all feel like something's not right. I mean, I'd rather stick a fork in my eye than go to question period most of the time. 
is just so brutal, and everybody knows it's brutal, but yet there's no space for us to think, well, how do we make it better? So this guy, to the south of us, some of us might call him an extremist, not everyone, but some of us might. This is, um, opponents of proportional systems say we'll get extremists in, and we might. We might get one or two seats um, of extremists, and they'll have to work together with, um, with the rest of the parliamentarians. The problem with First Pass the Post is that they get all the power. And it's interesting to note that our own Canadian extremist, uh, Kelly Leach, who was very anti-immigration, um, she and her um, campaign manager are fighting hard to prevent us from getting proportional representation. Our extremists prefer First Past the Post because it gives them all the power. So here we are. Disillusioned, disenfranchised, especially our young. Vote for nobody. Nobody will keep their promises. Nobody will listen to your concerns. Nobody will help the poor. Nobody cares. Nobody tells the truth. Our participation rate has been going down over the years. Uh, generally, uh, younger people, alarmingly so, uh, uh, people under 40, less than 40% actually bother to vote, have lost all confidence in our system. So that was um, our synopsis of First Past the Post, and now we move on to a solution. Now, 15 commissions have been done in Canada, and all of them have come out rec recommending a proportional system, that it would be good for us. Um, this is the heart of proportional representation. If the Purple Party gets 30% of the vote, they get 30% of the seat, 30% of the power. No more, no less. It's that simple. Okay. And this is a list of countries around the world that use proportional systems, about 90 of them. Um, Canada is... Uh, I had something to say about this. Um, there, yeah. There are no two countries that use exactly the same system. Now, I know we're not really talking about systems right now, but it's interesting to know that every country uses a variation that works for them, and we will do the same thing too. Um, of the developed countries, there's only three countries that still use first past the post. Anyone hazard a guess? United Britain, States, America, Canada, UK. UK. Thank you, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but not Scotland. So, under proportional representation, we will have minority governments and coalition governments rather than have a single party uh, government. Will they get anything done? Our opponents ask. Well, here is one minority coalition, famous coalition, minority government we had in uh, Canada between 1963 and 1968. They worked together and gave us universal health care, the Canada Pension Plan, student loans, the 40-hour work week, minimum wage, two weeks of vacation for everybody, our maple leaf flag, the end of the death penalty, and the end of racial discrimination. One government, not bad, I'd say. Proportional systems also elect more women, and that's a good thing because women's issues tend to be human rights issues, and they're severely missing. In Canada, we have um, women are make up 26 percent of the parliament, um, and we are ranked 64th in the world, um, coming right between Vietnam and Algeria in a number of women represented. So. We could, there's room for improvement. Uh, it's interesting to note in Australia, they have in their lower house, they use a winner-take-all system. In their upper house, they use a proportional system. 
Lower house, 26%, just like Canada. Uh, upper house, 42%. So just by changing the electoral system, you immediate, women immediately get a boost. Women and minorities. And it's important to have those voices. So are they going to spend like a bunch of drunk sailors, those minority governments? Well, that's not the uh, experience we see around the world. The largest deficits are actually in the three remaining uh, first-past-the-post countries. The US, US, of course, $821 billion deficit every year. Uh, Canada, not the worst, $28 billion uh, deficit, but compared that to Ger with Germany, $28 billion surplus. Imagine being a politician there. <laughs> and they're having troubles forming a government right now. They had elections uh, earlier this year, and it's Formation is taking a little longer because the voters gave politicians a difficult task. But when they're done, they will have the hard task of spending that $28 billion rather than dealing with the deficit. So will everything change? Will we recognize our own country, our own voting system? Well, very much will stay the same under a proportional system. It'll still be uh, organized by Elections BC, which is arm's length uh, organization from our government. Uh, we'll still be using paper ballots. It'll still be our neighbors. Some of you may know I used to train people who did this, uh, who take the vote. Uh, and when the votes are being counted, there'll be scrutineers there to make sure it's all honest. So will it all change? No. Just a bit. Uh, it also, um, proportional systems also give better governance. So uh, I'll just read it off here. Parties debate and work together and find what works for the majority. If you need support from another party, you're not going to be calling them names and, and looking for, for gotcha moments. One party does not dominate and work together. More results-oriented politics are actually trying to get something done, not just doing theater. Uh, higher voter turnout. Less strategic voting, most votes will count. Less income inequality. When we're talking about income inequality, we're talking about the rich getting richer, the poor getting poorer. Terrible outcome for society. And more socially and environmentally advanced politics. Almost done. So yeah, this is sort of where we ask you uh, for your questions. The quote up top there it says, "It's I want my vote to count, and I want my neighbor's vote to count too. That actually came from Nathan Cullen, who was here uh, for a fundraiser uh, this summer. And uh, it, Anne was there, recorded it, and it stuck with us as a quintessentially Canadian sense that, yes, we do want all everybody to be included in this. So. <laughs> Your questions, comments. Is the reason we're having? Oh. Is the reason we're having uh, another uh, referendum yeah. because the uh, uh, government has reneged on their promise to implement uh, the re proportional representation? Well, that's we. Of course, Justin Trudeau promised uh, that 2015 would be the last year. Uh, last election held under first past the post and he clearly broke that promise he changed his mind and or actually he said later he said he, he was never going to do it in the first place he just said he would so uh, so no it's it's not related i think this is just came out of uh, the uh, agreement between the green party and the ndp when they formed government both parties had it in their uh, election platform to, uh, to reform the political system, uh, and the two of them work together, and it makes sense that they would try to move it forward. Um, in, in jurisdictions that have changed over from first past the post, has voter turnout gone up? Yes, it has. Uh, generally speaking, in uh, proportion, countries with proportional representations, the uh, uh, people seven or eight percent more show up than in countries in first past the post. So in our case, we go from 65 to 75 or so uh, percent. 
Do you want to mention the online survey still? Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Um, so there is an, an online survey. Oh, I've got it over here. If you may have received this in the mail, this thing. And they are, right now, the government until Wednesday, so you still have till Wednesday to do it, is an online survey. Um, if you leave your name and number, I'll send you all sorts of things. Um, Fair Vote Canada has created a little bit of a survival guide because some of the questions are tricky and, and you, you don't really know what, how to answer it. Um, also, friends of ours have created an answer sheet, so you could just follow their answer sheet. If you're interested, leave your name and, um, and I will send that to you. Um, yeah, the government is looking at input from people in BC, so um, what the question should be and also what kind of system, what, what criteria do we want. So, yeah, please do. If you're, if you're interested, if you feel you have something to say, please do by Wednesday. Can you also explain about the mandate question? Mandate question? Mandate. Oh, mandate. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, um, right now, Fair Vote Canada is talking, um, lots of thinking, lots of emails back and forth, endless discussion, but thinking that it may be better just to stick with um, a mandate question. Do we want to move, do we want to modernize our electoral system to a proportional one? rather than bring a whole bunch of systems in there, which, let's face it, most of us aren't experts on the systems, and we're being asked something that's kind of out of our normal realm of expertise. So just saying, are we ready to move to a, a proportional system, may be a, an easier way to go, and then when we find out, yes, people do want that, then have a, not to give a government a blank check, we all know not to trust governments now, um, but to say, okay, let's have a transparent, open process uh, which involves citizens, which involves electoral experts, which involves um, BC elections, elections BC, and give them the time and the mandate to come up with a system which matches the criteria that which people want. For instance, one thing BC citizens want over and over again is local representation. We don't want to lose local representation. We don't want 87 lawyers from Vancouver running the show. We want people from our neighborhood that we can connect with, who speak our language. There's quite an <coughs> interesting political movement in the United States at this moment. There's quite a bit of uh, uh, activity to on April 1st have the entire schools shut down by the students leaving until they get a gun uh, proposal through Congress and they weren't coming back until that happens uh, and uh, a proposal was uh, given uh, humorously by Stephen Colbert the other day but makes a lot of sense that everybody over 18 shouldn't vote <laughs> nice. <one. laughs> Very funny. We we should actually wind, wind up it. We'll wind it up. Yeah. We're, we're just uh, one more thing. We have a table with stuff there. One of the things we're doing is collecting pledge signature, signatures. If you want proportional, if you're willing to vote, it says I pledge to vote yes to proportional representation in BC's 2018 referendum. If you get on this list, you'll be on the fair vote list. Uh, they're very good about not drowning people in emails, very respectful. Um, yeah, it's up to you. There's information there, help yourself. It's easy to find me and or Fair Vote Canada. So. Great, thank you, you guys. So Great job. I, I'm sure Ed and Shing are going to stay for a few minutes after if you want to buttonhole them with any additional questions you might have. Uh, this is the time when we pass our basket around if you want to make a small or a large contribution. If you need a tax receipt, you can get a, please put your, your, your donation in an envelope and then we can track uh, your, uh, your donation to your receipt and, and get your receipt because it's charitable tax donation receivable. 
Um, and then when the basket's done going around, we'll, we'll sing uh, from you I receive. And the words are in your um, little order of service slip. So if you have that, and Jacqueline will lead us uh, uh, in that. Mm -hmm. No, First the only question is, is, I'd like to hear someone do a, um, how is this spiritual? How is politics and spirituality, how are they married? What, what you know, how, how, how do we separate them out or bring them together? It, it, it's a tricky question, isn't yeah, it? it? Yeah, it is. Well, I took a stab at it before. <laughs> yeah. in, in a way, I, I, really, I really tried to do that because I... That's, that's the way I marry them, is uh, when you look for meaning in life and you, you want compassion for your fellow people, and what's more meaningful than creating something where more people are taken better care of? There's a famous um, um, commentary by Payment Children who um, is a Buddhist nun, but she said that one of, um, I'm trying to remember who it was, it was one of the um, masters. He was watching on TV without sound one time, um, people protesting in the streets and, and um, politicians um, um, in, you know, sort of arguing politics. And, and he'd come from another country and he made the comment that the angry faces looked the same. They, there was no difference. And I think there's been some work to um, try to move uh, polit you know, the people who are trying to make change um, into an understanding that if, if we approach change from the same angry, violent way and without a lot of community, community and, and collaborativeness, uh, we're, we're not going to get anywhere, I don't think. Well, and he didn't think so yet, either. We'll have to talk about it more. I, I yeah. think it's a long conversation. Yeah, I agree. Can we sing uh, from you, I received? Did the bass go all the way around? Yep. Okay. Yeah. The words are in your program. The rooms are in the little circle. Uh, from you, I received. Jacqueline picked it because it was... Don't, don't stand this time just because I think that we're all just a lot more comfortable. Okay. <laughs> if you want to sit and sing, Building a New Way. It's in the book as well, and the words are on the back of your order of service in big print. So if you just want the words, I put them on the back of the order of service in big print. New innovation. For those of you that like to follow the melody, it's in your red book. For those of you who, you know, that would just prefer to just read the words, this tune is very simple. Um, it, it's, um, I'll, I'll play it through once. Um, it goes... <laughs>
Jacqueline. Yeah. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe we'll learn it in time. <laughs> <laughs> These aren't easy. So I'm going to uh, extinguish our chalice, and I want to say before we do, um, I want to say just these closing words. They're from the Big Gray book uh, uh, by a fellow named Duke T. Gray. The blessing of truth be upon us. The power of love direct us and sustain us. And may the peace of this community preserve, preserve our going out and our coming in from this time forth until we meet again. So we, we, extingu we extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we meet again. And uh, this is the time for announcements, if anybody has any announcements. You can just blow those out. That's easy to do. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Anybody have any announcements? Yeah, make a wish. Yeah, I've got make a wish. wish. I wish for proportional representation. <laughs> 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 Hello. So I'm Lee. A couple of weeks, three weeks ago, I mentioned that um, I will be facilitating a group with seniors and youth to create community building and um, the conversation groups. So this is just a brief update and I'll leave you some information, some posters here. Um, so this group is open to applicants who are seniors. It will be through March and April, and um, I will be the facilitator of focused conversations on topics such as Me Too, or finding a creative identity in the world, or bullying, or loneliness. Uh, and the generations will get together, and out of that, an arts team will create a book and then, this is sponsored by Nelson Cares, it will become a community forum in November that will involve educators, seniors, and youth. So here's the update. The group is open to seniors, but is swamped with youth. And we have been adopted by a grade 11 class at LVR, I think 10 to 15 youth, who want to write the biographies of the seniors. Apparently, this is their favorite class project. Um, so the group, the poster has the wrong time. Uh, it will be now in school hours, and I don't know the time yet, on alternating Wednesdays and Thursdays starting in mid-March. Please contact me if you're interested in knowing more. Um, this poster, I think, is is the one for seniors because the youth want to be involved with you. Thank you. Dale, did you want to say anything about next week's service? We did already. We did already? Did you say about Carl? I mentioned it. I mentioned it would be a little story time about black <coughs> history, but uh, the, real, the real service is called uh, Seekers of the Way is actually Carl's title. It may also change to be called March 4th, because it's on March 4th. Um, that's up in the air, a little bit up in the air, but it, it's going to be a very interesting service about Carl's experiences with activism, Kinder Morgan objections, and uh, I think you'll And his deep really, Unitarian his roots. His deep Unitarian roots. He's, a, roots. he's a lay chaplain for many years for the UCB. He has a wonderful, intoxicating voice. I'm telling you, he's very good. Uh, he's an old friend of yours from very, Vancouver. Very good friend, and uh, just so much respect for him. Right. I'm glad he's you're a very here. strong environmentalist and dedicated activist. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like to remind everyone that next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month. So we'll be having uh, our we monthly delicious potluck lunch following the service. 
Anything else? I have one other, one other thing. Just, just, just about right. charitable receipts. Like, I, I do need to get uh, a number of addresses for, for people that actually want charitable receipts for this, this year. And so just to maintain a record of that, I encourage everybody to, you know, it doesn't matter how much money it is. It's, Way to use, way to use and, your money. Uh, also, <laughs> also, next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month, so the monthly storytelling guild is meeting at 7 o'clock. So, if you want more details about it, see Allie, Allie, or John, or myself. We good? Mm -hmm. Let's have coffee. Thank you everybody for coming. Yeah. Just a reminder, if your chair has arms on it, leave it where it's at. If it's got if it's red with no arms, you can put it back around the table. But otherwise you don't need to do anything with the arm arm chairs. Oh, the chairs. <laughs> arm chairs. chairs. Oh yeah. Yes, without arms, put it around the table. Around the table so it up nice. Yeah.
Did you get 70% of the votes? Oh, no, my parents You sent that on an email, right? I What do you want? Yeah, I've been here once before. Yeah, that's not good. There's, yeah, there's two of them, and they're both the same. So they're both the same. Yeah, okay, you can ask them. You asked that question, I was thinking about what parties are. And then parties don't particularly want it. Parties would rather have all the power. That's what the parties are, right? But they know that you want it, so they gain these carrots for us, and then it's sort of the world's treatment. We need more time to study over some. Right, right. Somebody asked for the additional questions on the questionnaire, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, Friday. Yeah. There's four academics who have got together. Academics are always questionable. And of course, I guess two of them were first class boosters, and two of them were first class boosters. Well, thanks, Shane. Very well. Were you deliberately not questioning the questionnaire? And of course, the office is no, no, just it's all biased and all that sort of thing. So everyone's going to be fair. Maybe. 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 Unfortunately, it just means that yeah, yeah. we get what we vote for. Yeah, so right yeah, now, right. um, you can yeah. vote yeah. conservative yeah. 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 and conservative. They'll never get in. And so, conservative. No, she's a she's come back so from the first one. She's from her trip, but she hasn't been back here. So, if you have a significant number of conservatives oh. here, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 say that yeah. she still wins, but she yeah, well, it's Dan said she didn't feel good. They'll also have no But the thing is, there'll be a ballot with either um, you choose two people or you can rank you in another trip and now you want to order that. So you you have to like, say it in the system so you can uh never have that and then we'll reach that in the door and make the ride and and then you have to reach all around so that you have someone well, we miss her. There's two uh, things yeah. that Emily's really do. One of them is that they help us to get our past yeah. The other yeah. thing is they yeah. have yeah. 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 But why would they have to do that? Well, because in the proportional system, you either have to increase the number of MLAs or you have to make the rights bigger because we're elected more than one. Yeah, yeah. Because there's really no other way to get them. Right now, we just select one. So we can take the one and not the whole. You don't even have to give me a half of the one. You don't even give me a half of the one. You don't even give me a half of the one. No, we would, yeah. well, it, it depends on the system, right? So it's, it's, it gets complicated. I'll get Shane too. You want to come in with systems? I hate systems. I stay away from systems. Just give me a list and perhaps say, just call that. Yeah. But I can, if you get like in a writing, you get 60% green, 30% uh, conservative, and 10% liberal. Yeah. Do you get three representatives in that writing, or just two? Well, it, it uh, depends on which system. Oh, yeah. okay. There's different ways. We need, if we want a proportional system, we need only three ways to waste it over. One is to become one gigantic row in the moment. Right. It's called Lisbia, they have that in Israel. Not what people want because you lose all the vaccines. So the other two systems, one is the old group, 
One is called mixed number proportional. That's a double the size of the body. Variety of same size as the body. And one representative for the much larger variety. Then you get second and you for that with that second vote you like the alkaline and the regional and so you choose interior of the sea with your ten ten bigger varieties and then all together we would also like ten regional No actually you know what actually so that's one way they, they would be from different parties. They would be from different parties, yeah. So, so, so yeah, the, in the large, 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 very much the way it is now, we only could have a preparation or whatever. But we could still elect only one, and then we could still elect a group. <laughs> and then the second way uh, to do it is a single transfer of the vote. That's what we like. Uh, voted on the two previous ones. And there you put six or ten writings together. And all together you elect six or eight so if, you, so if your question is because on our which system, so the writers will have to be made bigger, otherwise we have too many representatives. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. I know that. Well, there is this the third way to make more representatives. Uh, this one to be in uh, this one to be in this one to be in this one. Keep everything the same except this is too short. So that means that in this writing, there are three writers writing, but there are three representatives. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Except it would be much larger, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah.